Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Srimad Bhagavatam, Sixth Canto, Chapter 3 beginning of the sixth canto, Yamaraj instructs his messenger, verse number one. Sri Raja Ovacha, Sri Raja Ovacha, Deva Swabhota Varnitam, Prayaha Kimtam Apidharma Rajaha, Evam hatap gyo vihitam murare na de sikaira yasya vase janoyam Sri Raja Ovacha Samya Deva Swa Padato Pavarnitam Rahaya kim tam apidharma rajaha evam hatap gyo vihitam murare nade sika yasya vase jano yam sri raja uvacha Nisamya devam svabato pavarnitam Nisamya devam svabato dharma rajaha Evam patakyo vihitam morare Evam Ladies,
wants. Sri Raja Ubacha. The king said, the Samya, after hearing Deva, Lord Yamaraj, Svabhata, of his own servants, Upavarnitam, the statements, Pratyaha, replied, Kim, what? Tun unto them, Api also, Dharma Raja, Yamaraj, the superintendent of death, and the judge of religious and irreligious activities. Evam thus, Hatha Agya, whose order was foiled, Bihaitam were defeated. Morare Naida Sai Kai Morare Naida Si Kai by the order carriers of Morari Krishna Yasya of whom Vase under the subjugation Jana Ayam all the people of the world. So King Parikshit is speaking and he says, Oh my Lord, O Sukadeva Goswami, Yamaraj is the controller of all living entities in terms of their religious and irreligious activities. But his oil has been his order has been foiled. When his servants, the Yamadudas, informed him of the defeat by the Vishnu Dudas, who had stopped them from arresting a Jamil, what did he reply? Short purport here. Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says that although the statements of the Yamadudas were fully upheld by Vedic principles, the statements of the Vishnu Dudas were triumphant. This was confirmed by Yamaraj himself. So we'll go on. Verse number two. O oh, great sage, never before has it been heard anywhere that any order of Yamaraj has been baffled. Therefore, I think that people will have doubt about this that no one but you can eradicate. Since this is my firm conviction, kindly explain the reasons for these events. Verse number three. Sukadev Goswami replied, my dear king, when the order carriers of Yamaraj were baffled and defeated by the order carriers of Vishnu, they approached their master, the controller of Shamyamani Puri, the man master of sinful persons, to tell him of this incident. Verse 4, Yama, Yamaduta Uchu. O oh dear Lord, how many controllers or rulers are there in this material world? How many causes are responsible for manifesting the various results of activities performed under the three modes of material nature, sattvagun, rajagun, and tamagun? Srila Prabhupada's purport. Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says that the Yamadudas, the order carriers of Yamaraj, were so disappointed that they asked their master, almost in great anger, whether there were many masters other than him. Furthermore, because the Yamadudas had been defeated and their master could not protect them, they were inclined to say that there was no need to serve such a master. If a servant cannot carry out the orders of his master without being defeated, what is the use of serving such a powerless master? Om Magyan Timidandasya, Jina Jina Salakaya, Chaksun Militamina. Sri Chaitanya Mano Vistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Svayam Rupa Gadam Mayam Dadati Svapadantika Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shimakte Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Sadaswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Yevasesa Sunyavadi Pasyatya Deistarine 
जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासरी गौर भक्त बिन हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे वंश कौपुरु कृपा सिंधु पतिथान भागने We'd like to welcome all the devotees today, and especially, I think we have a special guest, Bhakti Das. Is it? That's correct, Bhakti. Bhakti Rupa Das. I'm sorry about the miss. So thank you for joining us, and we welcome your holy association. Thank you very much. Um, so this uh, this particular. Incident here is quite fundamental to understanding deeper religious principles, and that it appears to be that the the uh, order carries of Yama Maharaj, the Yama Dutas, were completely in line with their duty, which was given to them by their spiritual leader, spiritual master Yama Maharaj. But somehow or other, they were defeated. In executing their duties, and they were defeated by a higher principle. So Yamaraj was teaching, or at least giving the understanding that anyone who is sinful must be brought to me to, to reap the results of their activities. In other words, punishment. But and the Yamadutas. Understood clearly that there was no question about this person, a Jamil, about being sinful. He had performed many heinous and very abominable activities, so much so that uh, his list of activities were really extensive. He had cheated, lied, stole, gambled, and even kidnapped people. To hold them for ransom, so he could get large amounts of money. This was his program in order to support his highly, uh, highly living wife. A prostitute is not used to; uh, she's also used to high living because she always has a lot of money coming in from uh, her suitors who come continuously. So she wasn't used to going into a lesser role. After accepting marriage from a Jamil, so in order to satisfy his prostitute rights, he committed so many sinful activities. There's one story that uh, it's mentioned mentioned in a few places that because of his previous pious activities and his religious practice in his early life, he actually was a great not. Might not say a great saintly person, but he was pious. He was religious. He followed all of the good qualities that necessary to worship the Lord, and that was taken into account. This is a very important part of this because what he had done in the past wasn't lost, although it apparently had been a part of his life that was no longer even noticeable. But Krishna. Sent one personality. It's mentioned that his person was a saintly person to come to the house of uh, Ajamia when he was not home, when his wife was there, and she was at that time pregnant with the last child. And he said that I have come to give a message, and this message is for your blessings and for your benediction. We know you are about to bring a child into the world, so there is a request to name the child Narayan. So she was requested to give that name. In other words, Krishna arranged for this to happen in such a way that he could somehow capitalize on his uh, his pious activities and religious activities when it was most necessary, when it was most needed. And because of that, she told her husband, and he immediately agreed. Oh yes, fine. And they named the child Narayan. And as it's explained in the previous chapters, 
when he saw the Yamadutas coming, he was in a very fearful, frightful, horrible state of consciousness. And he simply could only think of the person that was the most dear to him. Now this is very important for us to understand that by practicing Krishna consciousness properly, although we may be surrounded by so many loved ones and friends who are very close to and have a lot of uh, interaction with, still we have to be careful that at the time of death we remember who we we're supposed to remember. <laughs> Otherwise, we might be back in that family again in the next life. <laughs> so in other words, we have to practice Krishna consciousness in such a way that Krishna becomes the object of our consciousness. And not anything or anyone in this material world, because at the time of death, it's a very, we might say, precarious situation. It's not easy to deal with consciousness at that time. It depends on the person, of course, but, per but those who are sinful, uh, they go through tremendous amount of suffering and bodily disorders that it becomes impossible to even think clearly. And they usually die in a state of just, just fear, remembering only what they did previously. And uh, Ajamil, he somehow or other made his son the most dearest thing in his life. He was 88 years old, it's mentioned. And he had a three-year-old son, Haribo. 86 years old, he's still, you know, quite active. You know. <laughs> You'd think at that time, you know, even 20 years earlier than that, <laughs> it's time to quit. You know. But. This was due to his lusty desires and the association of such a person as his wife. And uh, at being that old, usually it says that, that he's almost like a grandfather. <laughs> I don't think it doesn't mention he had any grandchildren, but he's almost like a grandfather in the sense that he is, he's in that age bracket. And now he has a three-year-old son so it's practically and they say that uh, older people become very inclined to the grandchildren <laughs> older people become very inclined to the grandchildren even more so than their own children <laughs> and they think oh if I can get some grandchildren my life is perfect <laughs> my mother used to criticize me no grandchildren Sorry, <laughs> well, my sister saved me anyway. <laughs> she had two kids, so that, that pacified my mother a little bit. But she used to get a little bit upset with me. Where's the grandchildren? Uh, there's no wife, so there's no grandchildren. <laughs> what to do, you know? So this is material life. Everyone is looking forward to that different stages of life where they can still find some kind of enjoyment. Instead of, at that age, instead of stopping all material and family activities, if they're still very active, thinking that this is, well, at least maybe they can protect me or give me some solace and some happiness at the end of life. The Prabhupada would explain, nobody can save you except Krishna. <laughs> Nobody can save you except the power of your own devotional service. So Ajamil, he just called with complete helplessness the name of the Lord, Narayan. But when he called, although he was calling for his son, he heard his own voice speak the name of Narayan in his state of you know, helplessness. And as soon as he heard the name of Narayan, and this is mentioned by the Acharyas and Srila Prabhupada also, that he remembered the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And that's the reason why he got Namabas. He called the Namabas, and all the reactions of all his sinful activities were completely destroyed. He hadn't attained perfection in pure devotion. 
but at least he was free from all the sinful. And therefore, the Yamadutis had no Yamadutas didn't have any jurisdiction over him. But they didn't see that, and they thought that they were being thwarted by someone else who is not qualified. And there was a big discussion, of course, and then the, the Vishnu Dutas were tri triumphant in defeating the Aradutas in, in a discussion. And now the Yamadutas are just, they're bewildered, they're baffled. We thought, we understand that the order coming from Yamaraj, and Yamaraj is superior. He is that person who everybody follows. But then you'll see as this chapter unfolds, he gives them the real instructions of his actual position in relationship to who is actually the, the supreme personality of Godhead. So here is, there's an interesting point that's being made here, that if a spiritual master or a great personality has disciples, and he gives them instructions by the power of them and their instructions that he, he gives, it's their power that they act upon and to carry out their orders. And therefore, they're thinking now, what happened? Yamaraj is not powerful. His order has been foiled. Why serve such master? They're actually angry. And then they, uh, somehow or other, you'll see as the verses go on and the explanations are given. But this is a very important point is that a spiritual master is a person who represents the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And so whatever instructions the spiritual master is given, we could actually say it is coming directly from the Supreme Personality of Godhead because of his connection. Because the spiritual master is also called uh, God who is serving. There is God who is servant, serving and God who is served. God who is served is the absolute truth, supreme personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna himself. And those, those who represent the Lord perfectly in pure devotional service take the role of accepting service on behalf of the supreme personality of God, and they are seen as good as the supreme Lord. I remember when Srila Prabhupada first started his Krishna consciousness movement, back in the early days of... Uh, uh, of the movement back in 1966, after he gave his first initiation, he gave a talk afterwards, and he says, he said that, and one should see the spiritual master as God. And then that was the last thing he said in the lecture, and get and left. And everybody, the devotees at that time were just completely baffled. As Prabhupada had been saying before, anyone says he's God, he's dog. <laughs> G-O-D, D-O-G. <laughs> so now, apparently, from their perspective, Prabhupada was saying something different. And that caused some turmoil. But one devotee was a little bit intelligent. He said, no, he's not saying he's God. We should see him like that. That's all. And somehow that prevailed, and that 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 uh, confusion was 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 settled. But the point is that the spiritual master's instructions are actually the manifestation of the words of the supreme Lord, given in such a way as for the benefit for the devotee. So the devotee is empowered to carry out those instructions. So now we're seeing that empowerment is no longer there with the Yamadutas, and so they're questioning. But they fail to see who Yamaraj really is. He's actually a representative of the super soul. He's not the super soul himself. In fact, Yamaraj is so powerful that he has the power, just as the Supreme Lord has, to know the activities of the conditioned souls in the material world. Sometimes Lord Shiva, Yamaraj, and of course Krishna within the heart knows all of the activities of the conditioned souls. Therefore, he's been given that special power in order to do his service, judging the, the sinful. But now he, he's thwarted. So what is, the, what is the essential meaning to this is that 
Before taking the spiritual master, one should be sure that this is what one wants. <laughs> In other words, we were talking about this yesterday, the other day, we were talking about and when you accept a spiritual master, you should very carefully understand before you uh, take, enter into that relationship that you will be able to give your life to the instructions of the spiritual master. Yasya Devi Para Bhaktir Yata Devi Tata Guru Tasyaita Kartita Yata Pakasana Matmaha That one who has implicit faith in the orders and the instructions of the spiritual master and Krishna, all the imports of all Vedic knowledge are automatically revealed in the heart. In other words, one doesn't have to study all the Vedas. No, one knows the conclusion of the Vedas. Vedanta Krishna says, I am the gold of the Vedas. There's no second gold. So in accepting a spiritual master, it's not like, you know, who's the most popular one to accept, you know. <laughs> It's not like that. One should be very carefully. And uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructed Sanatana Goswami to write Hari Bhakti Vilas and include that one principle. And Srila Prabhupada makes that point that there is called mutual evaluation or mutual testing. The guru sees whether the, the disciple is actually qualified to take on the position of accepting discipleship. And then there is an observation coming from the spiritual master. And then, on the other side, the uh, disciple sees, is this the person I really want to give my life to? And that's a decision that has to be made before it's consummated in the formal, formal ceremony of initiation. So therefore, one should, not, one should very carefully understand this principle, because sometimes we see we have examples in our own movement where people accept a particular spiritual master and then they meet someone else after. And they think, oh, I wish I would have took that spiritual master. I had a personal experience in that in my life. One very nice book distributor, she came to me and said, Maharaj, I like this other spiritual master better than my guru. <laughs> And so I want to take initiation from him. I said, you can't do that. <laughs> Your spiritual master, he was a very exalted person, her spiritual master too. He was fixed in Krishna consciousness. He had a lot of personal association with Srila Prabhupada. And he was, you know, someone who was exalted and known to be, a, you know, fixed in Krishna consciousness. And so, uh, but she was determined. I tried everything to convince her otherwise. And then I called up her spiritual master. And he already knew her mindset and what she was about to do. So he was so disturbed about that, he didn't even want to discuss it with me. So there was no discussion. So she went on, and somehow or other, this other spiritual master shouldn't have did that. We have the example of how um, Rida Chaitanya criticized Jiva Goswami for reinitiating his disciple, uh, Duki Krishna Das. Yeah, and he gave him the name. He didn't actually do it, it was Srimati Radharani, but because he was working under the care of Jiva Goswami, Rida Chaitanya wrote a letter criticizing, What are you doing? You, you, know, this is, you know, this is against all religious principles, this is against the etiquette of spiritual master. And so, yeah, so that was, of course, that was worked out. Jiva Goswami explained, well, I, I didn't give him the name. Srimati Radharani gave him the name. And so then that was, that was cleared. But in this particular case, which I mentioned, this spiritual master actually gave her a Diksha initiation. And now she supposedly was satisfied and happy. Her spiritual master was heartbroken. Because disciples are like children. A father has love and affection and care and concern for the welfare of their children. So that is the same mood as a spiritual master. 
that mood is also supposed to be there with the leaders of the country. But this is Kali Yuga. It's not like that. But that's, that is also the proper understanding and mood of a leader to see the, those who are their followers, they get everything to need, they need to live properly and to execute their, their duties in life. So after some time, referring to this incident, uh, she came running back to me, and she was all in distress. What happened was her new spiritual master fell down. <laughs> and it was obvious how he fell down. He somehow broke that principle, and then no longer he left this con and just went away, and even, even now I haven't even heard from him. This, this was about 20 years ago this happened. And then she said to me, well, what do I do? I said, go back to your spiritual master, your real spiritual master, fall at his feet, beg for his forgiveness, and say, please accept me back. She said, I, I'm afraid. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I said, don't worry. He's very loving, compassionate. He'll forgive you. Don't worry. So she did that. It took her a long time to actually come to that mindset to accept, you know, she really had to realize, feel in herself that she was really, really sorry for what she did, and she was willing to make whatever, uh, you know, repentance were necessary. But her spiritual master was so kind, he immediately accepted her back, put her back at her services book distribution, and I saw her more happy than she ever was before. <laughs> She was like flying off the ground. She was so happy. And she didn't have to go through that, though. <laughs> she, you know, so this is a very uh, interesting point, that when we accept the spiritual master, there's no question that we're accepting the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of God in, in the form of that spiritual person who can take us. And every day we sing... Let's see. Shri Guru Charana Padma Kevala Bhakati Sadma Bando Muhi Sarvadana Mate Yanhara Prasade Bhai E Baba Tariyarai. The spiritual master takes you across this great ocean of material suffering. Where does he take you, Krishna? Krishna Prapti Hoi Hanha Huite. He takes you to the lotus feet of, this, of Krishna. That is the duty of the spiritual master. When Srila Prabhupada was asked by one devotee one time, what is your, what pleases you the most? This was a group of Sankirtan devotees who had just come back from the book distribution. And uh, the question was obviously loaded, you might say. They, they, were, they, they were thinking, yeah, Prabhupada's going to say, them, what pleases me the most is distribute my books. That was the preconceived idea. Of course, you should never try to second-guess the spiritual master. You're always wrong. <laughs> You're always wrong. So they were thinking like that, and they were sure. So this devotee asked the question. Prabhupada said, what pleases the spiritual master the most is if you love Krishna. So that is the, that is the business of the spiritual master, through his service to Krishna and his service to his disciples to awaken their love for Krishna. That is his focus. And therefore, his, his, his disciples are very dear to him, as we mentioned. And so when before accepting a spiritual master, we should understand it's just like, you know, you can't give up your mother and father and take on another mother and father. It's just not possible. You may also have surrogate mother and fathers, those who can help you in your life. And you also have other spiritual teachers who are maybe your shuksha gurus who can add to the instructions and to the uh, power of the instructions coming from your own spiritual master. But your spiritual master is... Um, Guru Mukha Padma Vakya Chite Te Kodi Aikaran. The words of the spiritual master actually are her life and soul. So we should meditate on that. 
And even if one doesn't understand the instructions given by the spiritual master, or finds it hard to execute the instructions of the spiritual master, one should do whatever is necessary to clarify and then be enthusiastic to carry out those instructions because they're for the benefit of the disciple. But the point is made that once we accept the spiritual master, that is for life. <laughs> that is for life. In the life of Srila Prabhupada, there are such incidents where one person, I won't mention their name, came to Srila Prabhupada and said, Srila Prabhupada, give me your blessings. I want to take shelter of this other guru. <laughs> he had been going to this Rasika Babaji in, in uh, Vrindavan or in Radha Kund. And he was inspired by this person. So he came to Srila Prabhupada and asked. And Prabhupada later on in a, in a lecture, he said, he's coming to me to ask my blessings for a guru. He's my disciple. <laughs> <laughs> Prabhupada was, was quite upset about it. And, uh, and he, Prabhupada said, Prabhupada said, Prabhupada really blasted him, really blasted him. Said he's going to hell. <laughs> but Prabhupada was really strong. You know, Prabhupada, he gets right to the point. <laughs> <laughs> so that point is very important. And therefore, when you agree on initiations, I'm talking to many of you, many of you have come here as students to learn more about the process of Krishna consciousness. And you should understand, Tad Guru Eva, Tad Guru, what is it? Tad Guru Eva Eva Taru, Tad Guru, Tad Vigyana Guru Eva Abhigatsche, that to accept the spiritual master means to begin the process of human life. Natato Brahma Jigasa, because human life is meant for self realization. There's no re other reason for the purpose of human life. Other forms of life, they cannot take that. Other lower forms of life cannot come to that process of, de of devotion to the Supreme Personality of God. That's the special benediction of receiving a human form to solve all problems and ultimately come back to our original consciousness of loving service to the Supreme Personality of God. And that is perfection of life which satisfies all desires perfectly and eternally. So in understanding that principle, therefore one should very seriously think, yes, I need to find a spiritual master. And then execute the process, and as it says, when you are ready, Krishna will show you who your spiritual master is. When you go to Krishna to get guru, you when you go to Guru to get Krishna, Krishna comes as Guru to teach you who is Guru. And that way you're getting direction actually from the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So if we remain sincere in this process and very carefully follow the instructions of the spiritual master. The spirits, the light, the instructions of the spiritual master become the life and soul of the disciples. Not like some instructions are important and some instructions are not important. The third offense to the holy name is to obey the instructions of the spiritual master. But there's other interpretations, they're not, in, un, not interpretations, but there are other points that's added to that statement is that all of his instructions are important, not just, well, these seem to be important ones and these are not so important. That's called minimizing the position of the spiritual master. So with that content, and this is the success in, in Krishna consciousness. Sometimes people ask, well, what is, where do you put your consciousness in the success in Krishna consciousness? Two things in perfecting the chanting of your Hare Krishna mantra. In other words, trying to develop a taste for chanting by chanting more and more and more. And at the same time, carefully following all of the instructions of the spiritual master. 
it says that one who, who actually is absorbed in the, the instructions of the spiritual master is already back to Godhead. It's just a matter of time. <laughs> it's just a matter of time. Mm -hmm. So this is our process of Krishna consciousness. It centers around uh, worship of Krishna by worshiping his representative, the spiritual master. Um, and the, the spiritual master, of course, never thinks that he's under, under anything else but the representative of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He never thinks he's God or an incarnation of God or soon to be God. <laughs> we, we hear about that in today's world. There's a lot of that going on. I won't get into that because, you know, that's a whole other seminar. <laughs> but going back to the essence, Adal Shraddha Sadhu Sangha Bhajana Kriya, we were explaining that the other day. That nine stages of the process of bhakti, each one is progressively greater than the other. But the third stage is the, is the foundation by which one moves forward to the remaining stages, and that is bhajana kriya. That is taking shelter of Krishna's representative, hearing from them, hearing from them, offering service to them, and trying to understand how to make advancement and Krishna consciousness by giving further inquiries in one's process of devotional service. Sometimes we see a disciple will take initiation from a spiritual master and there will be no more contact, no effort by the disciple to get association to or even to um, attend the classes and hear the instructions of his spiritual master. Uh, that will dampen one's enthusiasm in Krishna consciousness. Even though one may be somewhat advanced, if one is, of course, very advanced and is already fixed on the instructions of the spiritual master, he may not have to have so much association. But hearing from the spiritual master regularly is very, very essential because there's always different instructions, added instructions, more instructions, greater understanding of how to practice Krishna consciousness and also greater knowledge of one's relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, yeah, so here we see uh, disciples have been frustrated only because they are in, they're in ignorance of actually the position of their spiritual leader. Yamaraj, and he'll clarify everything. Okay, we'll stop there. Questions? Hare Krishna. Bhakti Rupa Das Prabhu, give the microphone just next to the column there. You had your hand up? Bhakti Rupa, you, had, you, you raised your hand? So, so, uh, one, if one has accepted a spiritual master, taken initiation, and served that spiritual master, and if one is inspired, one is also, may also be hearing from other Vaishnavas, and one may become inspired to, by another Vaishnava's instructions also. Mm. Mm -hmm. So one can take permission from one's existing Diksha Guru to take Shiksha from that other Vaishnava and then that's, that's not considered to be an offense or, or any or, or rejection. One is still considering oneself to be a Diksha Guru, uh, to be a disciple of that Diksha Guru, right. but one may be, come under the Shiksha shelter of, of another Vaishnava. I think that makes this, the Diksha Guru spiritual master actually happy because he, then he's getting added um, help in, you know, elevating his, his disciple. So I think that is also recommended. But as you made, you made that one statement that they have to get permission. 
Because sometimes another spiritual master, although they are situated rightly in that position, they may have different moods. And therefore, sometimes a Diksha Guru will say, well, I don't think you should hear from them because the mood is different. My mood is completely different. So they may point to another person rather than the one that person wants. So therefore, getting permission is actually essential. It's part of the whole process, yeah. But that point is, is, is very important, you may, very important that to get additional instructions, which is not contrary. And the other point is if you hear from your Shikshu guru and you receive instructions, they shouldn't be contrary to what your Diksha guru tells you. And if there is some question or some doubt, you should present that to your spiritual master, your initiating spiritual master for understanding. That has to be, that's the etiquette also. Not that one simply takes on a shikshu guru and then uh, uh, there may be instructions that may be a little different or may not be in line with the instructions that is given by one's diksha guru for one's benefit. So in order to be chased to the instructions of one, one should clarify that. Thank you. All right, very good point. Make a note of that because it's also, we're like a family. Prabhupada created the International Society for Krishna Consciousness in the mood of a spiritual family where our spiritual master is considered our father. Srila Prabhupada is like our grandfather, <laughs> but he is also the foundation by which our fathers give us all the information we need and guidance we need. And uh, our, his god brothers, our spiritual master's god brothers, are like our uncles. <laughs> so you can also get help from your qualified uncle. <laughs> Not like, well, my guru is the only guru, and all these other gurus are, well, who are they? You know. The, the, the. Adisham, say something in this regard. Adisham, I know, is well versed in this, both in philosophical knowledge and in practical experience, in terms of what he deals with. Hare <laughs> Krishna. Uh, thank you for a beautiful class, Maharaj. And also very memorable kirtan and dancing kirtan today. I thought if this was the last day, I thought we'd go a little bit farther. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Maharaj, uh, in the course of my study of Prabhupada's books and hearing lectures, I came across this understanding that uh, Guru is only one, Krishna Mandi Jagat Gurum, and he speaks through the mouth of various Vaishnavas. Mm. You know, and amongst those Vaishnavas, you know, as you rightly said today in the lecture, uh, whichever Vaishnava I feel that my heart is resonating and I surrender my life to him. You know, after surrendering our life to one Vaishnava, we also take inspiration from various Vaishnavas to be able to follow the instruction of our Guru. You know, I call it as a multiple inspiration, singular accountability. You know, like for example, some boys ask uh, questions uh, for which I will suggest them to hear Ramogalila Prabhu or uh, Amarendra Prabhu or Chaitanya Charan Prabhu, you know, and, and when they go, they immediately become very convinced because somebody has scientific queries, I send them to Chaitanya Charan Prabhu's website. You know, so, so, so they, multiple... Uh, after because, hearing from these people, what do they do? Yeah, when they go and hear these multiple different people, and they become fixed up in their practice of Krishna consciousness. Oh, they become fixed up. Fixed okay. up, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because I may not be able to present uh, an answer which will be convincing to them as much as what, say, another preacher may be yeah. able to present. I can tell you an example from my life. You know, Chaitanya Charan Prabhu and me, we used to have a lot of discussions in Pune in the early days in Kunjivari temple. 
I found that he has a lot of scientific queries. Mm-hmm. So when uh, Drutakarma Prabhu came to Pune, I told him that Prabhu, this one boy, one devotee has too many questions on science. And uh, I can answer some of them and some of them are difficult. So Prabhu said, you can send him to my room. So he went, three days Prabhu stayed. After <laughs> third true. day, Chaitanya Charan Prabhu became a transformed man. You know, you know, he, it was like uh, Lord, uh, Chaitanya, Lord Chaitanya going to Prayag and coming back. Who came, who became transformed Chaitanya Charan? Chaitanya Charan Prabhu, yeah. Mm-hmm. Chaitanya Charan Prabhu became completely convinced of all his scientific queries and he came and told me, what a wonderful personality I am and now I'm my, all my doubts are just like Arjuna said, Nashto Moha, Smatir Love. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, from that I was convinced that I don't have to be the only person to save people. Yeah. There are many Vaishnavas in our society and I follow the same principle with different gurus also. When I, when I see you or when I see uh, you know, various spiritual masters in ISKCON, I get tremendous inspiration because I see the same Krishna speaking through different gurus. Uh, yeah, they are I, manifesting from the mouths of various gurus. At the same time, when it comes to following the instruction, if any guru tells me anything, I will go and ask my spiritual master. Right. Maharaj is telling me to do this, do you want me to do this? If he says yes, you do it, then I will do. If he says no, then I will go and tell the other spiritual master, Maharaj, I consulted my guru, he is requesting me to do this instead of that, I am sorry, I will tell him. Yeah. And it's really a, a really makes the spiritual master enlivened to see that his disciples are getting, you know, valuable and relevant information from other sources that could, they can use in their spiritual practice. But what would you say to people who say, well, I have my spiritual master, I don't need to hear from anybody else? What would you say to that? His Holiness Naranjan Maharaj in his book, Caring for Krishna's <laughs> Devotees. <laughs> Won't listen to that one. <laughs> he says, like the, in Mount Everest is the tallest mountain, but there are also other mountains by the side of that Mount Everest. Similarly, an ideal disciple is one who can see greatness in many Vaishnavas uh, besides his own Guru. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's a neophyte. <laughs> who says, you know, my guru is everything and nobody else knows anything. <laughs> and if they know something, it's just because they heard from my guru. <laughs> yeah, this is not, this is, well, we use the word neophyte, who thinks that his spiritual master is everything and the other devotees are not so advanced or so important. But even a spiritual master will even think, oh, there are many devotees who are more advanced than me. He doesn't think because I'm in that position, I'm, I'm the most advanced. He said, it's only by Krishna's mercy that he's giving me this service. And therefore, it's only by Krishna's mercy that I can do this service. Too. He never thinks I'm so advanced. Yeah, thank you. That's a nice point. Okay. Yes, we had a question over here. Right there, yeah. Pramaraj, I have a couple of questions which always disturb me when it comes to guru-disciple relationship. The first being the fact that you told that we have to accept the words of spiritual master as it is. But then uh, it is also an understanding that we should take the teachings of shastras also into consideration while following the instructions of spiritual master. That whatever spiritual master is instructing, is it in, in accordance with, with shastras? Because we see we see from his yeah, history. Yeah, it is, according with the Shastras, but then again, everything is time, place, and candidate. So the Shastras are broad. They're speaking about different situations in different, even different universes with different uh, personalities involved. So you may find that uh, one answer for a particular situation given by a spiritual master doesn't apply to all the situations. So that's why you get your answer specifically about what question you want to ask. And if you, as you mentioned, if you ask a question and you get an answer and you're not completely understanding or not satisfied, then you ask a next question to get clarification. 
Well, Guru Maharaj, you said this, but what does it actually mean? How can I carry it out? How do I apply it in my life? These, these things you all should also be part of your uh, clarification and when you get instructions. So we read the scriptures also. And um, we may just surreptitiously or just all of, you mean automatically try to apply a scripture injunction to all situations, but it may not apply. That's why Guru acts on behalf of scriptures to help us understand how to apply scripture. Uh, you read the Bible. I read the Bible day and night, whereas you read black and I read white. <laughs> that's his statement. That's given by Henry David Thoreau or Walt, Walt Emerson. Emerson or William Blake. That people are reading the same scriptures and coming with different conclusions. But that's why you need clarification from Guru. That's why we have to hear regularly. If we hear regularly, we'll get all our doubts cleared. Our answers will be collected, will be given, even without asking questions. If we're, if we're in the process of regular hearing. Yes, Maharaj. Maharaj, uh, just a follow-up question to that. You spoke about uh, the importance of Diksha Guru in in an individual's life, but we see the span of Gaudiya history. Then, and then. Prominently, the Siksha Guru was, was the most important person in, in a sadhak life. But now there's a chance. Is it due to institu institutionalization of Gaudiya Vaishnavism that Siksha Guru it's is important? It's just that these persons who come in the line were prominent gurus at that time. That's why we have a Shiksha line. It doesn't mean that they're more important. <laughs> it means that they were more prominent in the preaching of Gaudiya Vaishnav philosophy at that time and were recognized in that same way. Mm -hmm. Why you talk about accountability to Diksha Guru? So were these personalities also, although they were taking education from the Siksha Guru, were they also simultaneously accountable to their Diksha Gurus? Like we see in case of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he had this, this Diksha Guru, yeah. but not, not much relationship is talked about that. Maharaj. Yeah. Well, yes, whether Bhaktivinoda Thakur was what was his Diksha Guru name? Hari. Vipin Bihari Goswami. Vipin Vipin Hari. Vipin Bihari. Vipin Hari. Yeah, but you don't hear much about him. But he and Bhakti Vinoda Kaur doesn't write about it so much or speak about it. So what does that mean? He has less allegiance to his Diksha Guru. No. Uh, the relationship is there, is eternal. But the line is sometimes not given in the same way. A Diksha Guru, disciple, Diksha Guru, disciple. Because the line is based on prominence of preaching Gaudiya Vaishnav tradition and who was outstanding in that time. So you have the example of, you know, Gorky Shore does Babaji. And then Bhakti Vinod Thakur. And Gorky Shordas Babaji was not a disciple of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. <laughs> Nor was um, Jagannath Das Babaji the guru of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. But they were prominent in their preaching in that line. Wait. Or is this? So, so, what's the problem? <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, you can't ask Bhakti Vinod Thakur what it was his relation with. I mean, it's too late now. It's, but you might say, because he's a great Vaishnava, he's not going to reject his guru. There's, an there's a story, of course, maybe I need confirmation on his story. I heard this story, where Bhakti Vinod Thakur paid obeisances to his spiritual master, Bipin Bihari. And Bipi Bihari put his feet on the head of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. And Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati was there. And he took issue with that. You heard of that, right? He took issue. You don't know who he is, you know. He said that to Bipin Bihari. <laughs> 
So, uh, yeah, so that incident is there. But you see, Bhakti Vinod Thakur didn't, you know, say, well, who, who are you to put your feet on my head? He didn't say that. <laughs> yeah, he accepted that as his spiritual, the mercy coming from his spiritual master. Thank you, Maharaj. Just one last question, Maharaj, if you kindly allow. Maharaj, uh, uh, Did yeah. you digest that one? <laughs> Because before you can eat the next bite, you have to digest. Because if you don't digest, then you get indigestion. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. You got the last answers? Maharaj, I got some extent of it. I'll have to uh, no, listen almost, it again and again. Right. Okay. Keep asking that question until you get the answer. <laughs> but but that, was, that was very clear, Maharaj. It cleared it a lot. Okay. Maharaj. It's important that... We don't just go for questions and answers just because it's fun. <laughs> we want to understand, and so we can get some un some realization, so we can apply, and we can use that to move forward in our in our knowledge and our practice. Not questions for the sake of questions. Thank you, Maris. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Maris. Yeah. Question here. Thank you, uh, Like you have told, like uh, uh, slow, uh, slow, slow, <laughs> slow. I only understand English. Maharaj, <laughs> uh, like uh, um, you have told, like uh, we have uh, to take shiksha from shiksha guru, but we have to check with, uh, like sometimes we have to check with uh, our shiksha guru. It's good to do that. Yeah to confirm what you hear, but the person you confirm it with has to be on the same level as your spiritual master. If you're getting instructions from the spiritual master, you can't confirm it with somebody who is not on that same level. Because, you know, you'll get, you may get another answer. But they may help you, but if they can explain it for you so you can get a a more clear understanding, then that's that is acceptable. Yeah. Like sometimes our authorities is like who is our authority, like temple president or uh, who is the service. The temple authorities are actually representatives of our spiritual master. That's why when Prabhupada would hear reports that people were not following the temple authorities. They will. They would said, "I want to follow my spiritual master. I'm going to follow them." Prabhupada said, "That's that's where the spiritual master's authority is, in the leadership under who they're working with. So if they follow the temple authorities who are given that position by the spiritual master, then they're following the spiritual master." Yeah, over here. Hare Krishna. So, uh, you told one statement that choose the spiritual master whom you can dedicate your whole life. So, firstly, can you elaborate that statement, how you got convinced that you can give your life to your guru? And well, second, That was easy. Prabhupada was the, you know, Prabhupada came along and he was like the bright light. <laughs> <laughs> and there was nobody trying to challenge Prabhupada at that time. <laughs> And anybody who tried to, they would look pretty, pretty bad. <laughs> so yeah, Prabhupada came. So he just he just picked us up. Uh, that was easy. Now it's harder. You've got 108 gurus to choose from. <laughs> so, so the process is to hear. And hear in such a way that you can understand what that person is saying is what I want to follow. And there are many persons who can inspire you in your Krishna consciousness. So sometimes we give the understanding that person who can inspire you to give your life to Krishna. You might say that that is your spiritual master. Because we have so many persons that can give really nice lectures and inspire them so many. But one who inspires us, then I want to surrender to that person because I feel that he can take me back to God. 
that kind of inspiration you have to you have to look for. Uh, so and generally we, uh, while observing exalted devotees like Maharajas, we tend to judge them with our like imperfect minds. So how can we avoid that also? We tend to, because the spiritual master does something ordinary, we uh, become a little bit just doubtful of his spiritual position. Yeah. Spiritual master also has to sleep, he has to eat. He may also have to deal with other things that are ordinary when it comes to carrying out his service. So Prabhupada also had that, could, could also observe that many of his personal servants who were finding fault with him. And that happened too because they somehow see that the, the, the routine activities of the spiritual master, uh, you know, they have this conception that the spiritual master should be, he should be floating above the ground, <laughs> riding on the swan airplane, and he has, his eyes should be so bright that it lights up the whole room when he comes in. And if not like that, then something's, something's not right. Maybe he's not fully empowered. But, uh, you know, a spiritual master will also have so-called ordinary activities. But you should, if you see him as ordinary, as a, what is it? What is that verse? Arche vishu sila di guru shu nomachi vaishnave jati bhuti. Guru Shu Normati, to see that the Guru was coming from some material background. And based on his, his, his country he comes from, the language he speaks, some of his personal idiosyncrasies or habits, seeing those as being something less. The, most, the instructions of the spiritual master is the lifeline of the devotee. That's what you should focus on. What is his instructions? Not so much his appearance. Mm -hmm. His appearance may be this way or that way. Mm -hmm. But that's not important. And if you judge the spiritual master by his appearance, that's mentioned in the next instructions or that connection. Mm -hmm. And Srila Prabhupada had to somehow uh, change his, some of his personal servants because they were getting too familiar. In the uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, in the story with Indra, when he, was, when he failed to recognize his spiritual master, Brihaspati, when he came in during the time that Indra was being worshipped, Brihaspati immediately saw that and he turned around and left. And Indra realized he committed an offense. And in the preceding verses, the following verses, it tells, mentions that there's five deficiencies or faults of a, of a disciple which they should avoid in relationship to their spiritual master. One is familiarity, two is hypocrisy, Three is duplicity. Four is failing to follow the instructions. And what is one more? Fight, finding fault. These are the five things that a disciple will, if, if they take on this, then they'll fall from their position. Maharaj, Hare Krishna Maharaj, Nandat Pranam. Maharaj, uh, at the time of Srila Prabhupada, there was, uh, there was only Prabhupada, one Guru, and uh, he, all the disciples ha had one person to get inspiration from. So there was one mood that was flowing in the whole society. Not exactly. But, there were other Gurus that came from India. In the ISKCON society. Uh, but uh, somehow, and they also made followers, many followers too. 
I could name a few of them who were popular during that time. And they also had many, many followers. But mm, Prabhupada, the outstanding point about Srila Prabhupada, sometimes people ask me, mm, what, was, what attracted you most to Srila Prabhupada? And it was his surety. He said, this is the, this is the way it is. It's not, well, maybe like this, or it might be like this. I'll let you know when I really know later. <laughs> no, he said, Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and you are his eternal servant. That's it. <laughs> I mean, he emphasized that. And when Prabhupada spoke, he spoke with surety. He spoke with conviction. He spoke with, with a kind of a, an individual Shakti that really, really, if you were listening, you were you were affected by that. So, my so we didn't have any problem, but there were other gurus that were going around at the time. And there was even some devotees who became devotees of Srila Prabhupada who were following other gurus before then. They left their other gurus and came to Srila Prabhupada. And there was a couple who went the other way. <laughs> I mean, that's just the way Kali Yuga is, you know. There's always people who don't want to follow the strict line of, uh, you know, giving up all m m sinful activities and practicing spiritual life. <clears throat> one, one devotee said to Prabhupada in the early days, you know, this sex life is normal. How can you restrict it, you know? <laughs> but he wound up leaving, you know. Maharaj, like in current uh, situation when ISKCON is an ever-evolving society with many gurus, there are different different gurus with different uh, There mood is of only one guru. <laughs> There's only one guru, but he manifests in different forms. Guru is one who teaches the, the process of loving service, devotional service to Krishna. Wherever that is, that is guru. So guru is one. But they manifest in different forms of that same personality. Therefore, and the only guru is Krishna. Therefore, well, like Krishna see. is called Adi Guru. So don't say, that, well, there's this guru, that guru, this guru. There's only one guru, but it manifests in different forms, that's all. That's the understanding. If you see many gurus, you're seeing, you're not, you're not understanding the principle. There's only one spiritual master, Krishna. That's all. And he manifests his, 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 his form as guru in different personalities. That's all. Maharaj, like the, in the, the various moods which uh, this different spiritual masters are carrying, how do we accommodate these moods? Like there are sub certain, uh, there is a certain section that follows the traditional way. There well, are that usually comes in the, the, the spiritual master might emphasize a particular type of service. Like some ser uh, spiritual masters may emphasize you, like book distribution. That would be their mood, they'll focus on that. Others might uh, emphasize preaching to, you know, to students or to new people. So there may be a different emphasis on how the spiritual master instructs his disciples in giving them devotional service. So that's more or less how the mood you know, manifests itself. There might be an emphasis on a particular way to practice Krishna consciousness. But they're all practicing Krishna consciousness. That's all. The emphasis really is the mood like that. One question, one more question, Maharaj. Like it is uh, most of the times recommended and uh, it's, it's said that we should uh, go for a guru who is more accessible, who is in our local zone, so that we can approach him more easily. And uh, that's what we see also in a particular region, one guru is more prominent than the other one. So what is the, what is the ideal way of uh, choosing my spiritual master or one's spiritual master? I think we answered that question. So is this local it's, recommendation like this particular? That, that was a consideration years ago, but then that was rejected. 
that even devotees who are in a particular area were saying, you have to accept this person as spiritual master because he's preaching in this area. But that created a problem because some people didn't want that, were not inclined to that in spiritual master. Not that they didn't want, but they were just not inclined to it. So the guru will, only you can choose your spiritual master. Others can help you to understand how to make the choice, but nobody can make, can make your choice for you. And zonal acharya was, was, uh, was eventually seen as restricting people from actually making an honest evaluation and choice for a spiritual master. One last question, Maharaj. Well, you got that question? You got yes, the answer? Yes, yes, I'm sorry. Are you sure? Yes, yes. Okay, yes. tell me what I told you. You said that <laughs> local consideration has been rejected and uh, only that person who is choosing a spiritual master is, uh, is the right person to, to make that decision. Yeah. No other person. Only can. you. But you may get help to understand how. <laughs> yeah. So but, it's not about location so much. Much one question is that sometimes it is said that we should accept Guru because he empowers us to execute devotional service. So we are weak to execute that devotional service, he empowers us. And sometimes it is said that when you are spiritually healthy, then you go for accepting initiation. So what is the right time of accepting a spiritual master? When, when is the right time to start aspiring for a particular spiritual master? Not yeah. initiation, but aspiring, right? Maharaj, I can clarify his question. Sometimes the people say, when the uh, rod is hot, then you can hit it. Similarly, you prepare yourself to a platform when you are ready for initiation. Some people say that. Others say, if you are very weak, take initiation so that Guru will make you strong. So you have to wait till the iron is hot before you... <laughs> As soon as you come into association of devotees, you should be thinking in that way. And then as time goes on, you'll start to understand. And then when the iron gets hot, then, then that's Krishna in the heart telling you this is, you know, this is your spiritual master. That hot iron is not simply, you know, just taking too many chilies. <laughs> It's, uh, it's actually, you know, Krishna in the heart. <laughs> yeah, okay, we got a few questions here. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Okay, who's got the microphone? We have to get this side here, too, because I think there's some, some questions over here. If we take all the questions, we'll be here until... Kibaya Jayo Jaya Bodhi Chandhe Aroti Ke Soho Bha Kiba Jayo Jaya Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you for this wonderful class and clarifying uh, all the doubts regarding the uh, spiritual master and disciples relationship. So in the, uh, there are a couple of points I, uh, I will just quote talk, from you. You have to talk really slow. Yeah, sorry. So I will just first uh, uh, quote this couple of points from your class to uh, refer my question. So you mentioned that in the, your time, Srila Prabhupada was only the bright light. There was no other option. I mean, there were other persons who were pre presenting themselves as gurus. But we could see, the, at least I could see the difference between those others and Prabhupada. No, I am not talking about the other than the uh, like following the uh, only saying that Krishna is the supreme person about it. I am not talking other gurus. I am talking about the, in the ISKCON, Prabhupada was the only guru the, during your time. And many Prabhupada disciples, some of them have now, not even seen the Prabhupada. They got to know about Prabhupada through their disciples. Hmm. And they heard and they got inspired and because only Prabhupada was there, they took initiation and they inspired and they got connected to Krishna. Right. This is one point. Next point is, like you mentioned that we should uh, understand like who inspires you more Krishna. Everyone is like, Guru is one, but manifestations are different. 
and that who that which manifestations inspires us and more connects you to krishna you can accept him as a guru and follow his instructions we are in the cities and where uh, like like we are, we are what we are in the city where cities and prominent cities and prominent sorry we, we are sorry i will slow go over slow here Oh, yeah. cities, yeah. cities and towns. Yeah. Okay. okay. So where we have more access to different spiritual masters and their qualification. Or some people are ready to like educated. They also able to understand the. There's some uh, people who never see their spiritual master, but they just hear from them. Yeah. Through so recorded he, lectures. Yeah. So here the point is, Maharaj. So when like consider, I I got some. Uh, I, um, yeah. I have got initiated on a spiritual master. i have family members uh, mothers or fathers who are not educated and they they just uh, will listen to about uh, some spiritual master from me like during your time your dis- uh, prabhupada's disciple senior disciples oh, oh, wait, wait, get to the question yeah so the question is maharaj how those people will not won't be directly able to listen to shrilap uh, a uh, spiritual different spiritual master and like uh, pro extending prohibition question that in particular zone if only the particular spiritual masters are there they have that options and they also are not like uh, more clear about the instruction and that connection to spiritual master so it is more about this who is like in the family member is someone is a spiritual master ex spiritual master he will hear about from them and then they will take a initiation from them but how that connection is there is it then is it also uh, they are not clear and it does anybody know what the question is because uh, <laughs> i don't really understand the question <laughs> i'm sorry i'm maharaj say one one boy you you answer it you know maharaj <laughs> but sometimes students get initiated by one spiritual master and they go to their village and introduce their parents grandparents you know, brothers yeah, sisters to that to... guru and they all take from that guru so his point is they are taking diksha is blind faith without much knowledge of or awareness of the guru that is his question so the guru has to become and has to come in disciplic succession from krishna and also i was just reading the there's one purport that says that unless you take initiation in one of the four sampradayas your mantra and your initiation is useless that's your prabhupad statement i can give you the verse too it's in this whole section that we're reading about it's um, i can tell you the verse here it's um, it's right here in this same uh, yeah it's in verse number 20 and 21 of the same chapter and prabhupad says here sampradaya hina ye mantra stay nishvala ambata if one does not follow the recognized cyclic succession his mantra or initiation is useless in the present day there are there are many sampradayas or sampradayas which are not bona fide which have no link to authorities like lord brahma lord shiva kumaras and lakshmi so these are the sampradaya heads so we have four sampradayas we have the kumara sampradaya we have the rudra sampradaya we have the lakshmi sampradaya shri sampradaya and we have our sampradaya brahma gaudiya madhava sampradaya so in this age of kali you'll find there are so many and it's unlimited uh persons who present themselves as spiritual teachers who have no connection with a, with a with a lineage of, of gurus going back to krishna so in order to be safe we have to stay within these four sampradayas like that so you ask them what is their connection with that is that spiritual master coming from either one of these four sampradayas if they are then that's bona fide mm-hmm. is that the answer yes maraj very nice thank okay. you maraj maraj I, i had one small question he about. looks still confused um, but you talk to radhi shah yeah, later clear. he'll 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 help you
within iskon only there are if there are multiple spiritual masters then uh, that is the my that was the my question <laughs> Yeah. Maharaj, I had I had one small question. Maharaj. His Holiness, uh, His Holiness Bhakti Rasamrit Maharaj had submitted one article to GBC. Bhakti who? His Holiness Bhakti Rasamrit Swami. Okay. Yeah. And Maharaj called Uddharaka Guru. Now, who is the liberator? So, in that uh, he writes there are five factors which influence the uh, devotee's deliverance. So, one he says the Diksha Guru. Then he says the Shiksha Gurus. Uh, amongst whom the most prominent is Shrila Prabhupada, the so, uh, most prominent shiksha, preeminent Shiksha Guru right. of Iskon. Thirdly, the holy name. Fourthly, the scriptures, and the fifth one, the Shraddha of the individual. So he says that out of these five, some people have a great emphasis that Prabhupada is everything for me. Although they take Diksha from one Guru in Iskon, Shiksha is the most prominent for them for from Prabhupada. Some people for them Diksha Guru is life and soul, you know. Uh, and they accept Prabhupada because Diksha Guru happens to be Prabhupada's mm -hmm. disciple. Right, right. They accept. Okay. And there are others who may read Prabhupada's books, but they have a Mataji or a Prabhuji, a Shiksha Guru, on whom they totally depend upon for uh, advancement. In whichever locality they are living, they, they fall do. in love with the Shiksha Guru and then they follow like that. And then there are yeah. people to just who have, chant the holy names. Ah, uh, just chant the holy name. Huh? Yeah. Like there they, are people. They say like, they quote that part in the yeah, uh, they quote Chaitanya like Charitamrita. They, they, yeah. Uh, to, you don't, it's not required to have initiation, just chant the exactly, yeah. And some uh, depend on the scriptures. If scriptures say something, they will put full faith, otherwise not. So what he was telling was our, our cumulative faith is a total of all these things put together and that's what ultimately delivers us. Yeah, you need them all. <laughs> you need all five. The, the spiritual master teaches you based on your scriptures and he also instructs you to chant the holy names and if you develop faith and you'll develop faith in both uh, Srila Prabhupada and your representative your representative spiritual master so they all all five are connected all of that's connected yeah. this is a great uh, I use the word great complex subject <laughs> because there's so many aspects to it and there's so many statements in the Shastras that appear also to be somewhat contradictory in terms of the relationships and the activities. And there's so much influence coming from the outside that people are affected by. So um, therefore Guru Tattva is something that even now the GBC can't give a final statement on. <laughs> well, they know is that the principles that govern Guru Tattva. But there are so many variables, time, place, circumstance, candidate, qualifications. Uh, and because there's different levels of spiritual masters also. There's those who are situated on the highest platform. They're, they're uh, you know, they're Uttama Arikari. And it says you should take instructions or you should take initiation only from an Uttama Arikari. But then those who who are can also be spiritual master who are on the Madhyaban platform, they can also and uh, be in the position of spiritual master. And when Prabhupada somehow designated certain people to take the role of spiritual master to continue our lineage Prabhupada knew some of them weren't Uttama Arikaris, but at least they had reached the stage of Madhyama, and if they continue with their spiritual life, they could also come to the perfectional stage. And they're also qualified to accept disciples. So I'm just giving you a little bit of a more of a, uh, the complexity of Guru Tattva, because it's very hard to understand things clearly. But in your own understanding, those who represent Srila Prabhupada and in their practice and in their speech, everything, you can actually hear from those. And after hearing from them, after some time you can choose which person you want to give your life to. 
They have to be cent per cent fixed on Srila Prabhupada. That's what you should look for also. And that means you have to know Prabhupada. <laughs> so it's a great science. One question over in this area, just to give this side some... Uh, okay, one last question. Huh? Yeah, well, let's go all the way in the very back. Yeah, to, yeah. Stand up when you ask your question. Here you go. Okay. Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, thank you very much for the wonderful class. Maharaj, uh, in one of the purports, Srila Prabhupada has written that uh, one should, not, uh, one should not go for uh, initiation or spiritual master unless and until he feels that dire necessity to have one. Unless there is a dire necessity? Yeah. You, that, that you better lo- you be- the human life means dire necessity. <laughs> <laughs> That's no, the dire necessity. <laughs> now, Maharaj, uh, in my case, means I get to execute all the um, limbs of devotional service like uh, association of devotees and uh, sevas and etc. So, in such situation, I don't feel that uh, need to go for spiritual master. In the same well, atmosphere... Just keep associated. Uh, Adao strata sadhu sangha. Sadhu sangha means associating with devotees yeah. and practicing the process. No, Maharaj, that, uh, if you practice the process in association with devotees, you want to become more and more fixed in the practice. <laughs> then you understand the importance of a spiritual master. <laughs> Uh, no, Maharaj means uh, the, my... But you're saying you're not interested right now. No, Maharaj, I'm very much interested. <laughs> but uh, means that uh, intrinsic attraction for spiritual master, which my friends or my duty friends have... It's that, not going to fall out of the sky and hit you on the head. <laughs> you just stay in association with devotees and practice. And, uh, and if you're practicing properly and you're, you're trying to understand, you're trying to serve you're getting along with other devotees, and gradually you'll start to understand that this is, this is actually my life, this is normal. To worship the Lord is actually the only, the only business of the living entity. It's normal. To not do that is abnormal. <laughs> but Maharaj, little bit whatever I have means I want to increase that attraction which other devotees have. How can I do that means? What was that question? How can we cleanse? Just keep hearing from persons that you feel inspired from. If you see the certain persons who are in a position to, uh, you know, to be spiritual masters or are spiritual masters, choose maybe two or three and continue to hear them from them, and then gradually you'll start to understand. Which one is your spiritual master? Don't hear from everybody. You know you'll you, you know you'll be there for years trying to figure it out. Those that inspire you now, couple maybe two or three different personalities, just keep hearing. That hearing process is going to awake. Shravanam, Shravanam awakens because Shravanam, when it's d- done properly. It awakens one's desire to serve. Our constitutional position is to serve. And by hearing, you'll get that inspiration you want to serve. Not only do you get knowledge, but you want to serve. Because that's our nature to serve. That'll come automatically through the hearing, the process of hearing. Just continue with the process works. <laughs> Just you can't expect the, the results when you first start. Just keep hearing. And if you have questions based on what you hear, ask questions. That's why Srila Prabhupada said all of the nine process of devotional service must be accompanied by the process of hearing. Hear from Guru, hear from Shastra. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna.
Is it Sandraman Swami Maharaj? So we are very grateful to Maharaj for uh, giving his valuable association to all of us in the last many days. So the Kirtan that Maharaj did in Guru Puja, you know, it was uh, very much reminding us of the Kirtan that would happen in, you know, Navdeep in the home of Shiva Stakur. And that, uh, and that Chaitra Mahaprabhu and his associates would do nocturnal Kirtans. In the night, whole night they would do like this. And uh, I had a little bit of similar experience in my early days in Bombay Chopati uh, in 91, 1991. The Kirtans would be like this and whenever Maharaj comes, the Kirtan would become, it's a triple effect. <laughs> The would be flying up uh, and they'd be touching the ceiling. Huh? <laughs> That's why Maharaj was selling like that, he was selling. <laughs> so, all the Maradangam players, Kartal players, dancers, and when new people come, they would think, hey, these guys are mad. <laughs> so, one time His Holiness uh, Bhakti Tirita Swami was selling. You know, he said, the goal of life is to become mad, he said. Mad for Madan Mohan, he said. <laughs> And, and then I came to know the Sanskrit word uh, Madan Mohan means, the one word Mada means to become mad, <laughs> to become attracted. <laughs> so he said, if you don't become mad after Krishna, you'll become mad after Maya. He yeah, said, that's the point, yeah. <laughs> you can't avoid madness. <laughs> <laughs> so, today, in the Ketan and dancing of Maharaj, all the boys got observed. Even the youngest boys who are strongest fellows got tired. Eh? <laughs> Maharaj made everybody exhausted, all of them, squeezing out their energy and offering it at the lotus feet of Radha and Chandra. Hmm? <laughs> so we look forward to more and more association of Maharaj like this. And the lectures along with the beautiful question and answers, they have been very, very clarifying, enlightening and uh, making our path very clear in spiritual life. Let's thank Maharaj with three loud Haribo! Srila Prabhupada K! Radisham Prabhu K! Bhakti Rupa Prabhu K! Hare Krishna! So many great personalities here. <laughs>